Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Dad's Playing Games, and this is the eighth battle in my solo campaign for the game of Frostgrave. Be sure to check the details below for links to the introductory video for this campaign, and there you'll also find timestamps for this video, as well as links to some of our other Frostgrave content. For this battle, we will have Caltropos the Illusionist against Zoltar the Enchanter, and they'll be squaring off in the scenario The Well of Dreams and Sorrows from the Core Rulebook. This scenario calls for a standard table setup with the exception of a well, which is placed in the center of the board. Any wizard coming into contact with the well can spend an action to drink from it, which will give them 50 bonus experience at the end of the game. If a figure is pushed into the well, they are removed from the battle. For the first time in this campaign, you'll see that one of these warbands has hired a captain, which is a special soldier described in the Sellsword expansion book. I mentioned in my introductory video that I wasn't sure if I would ever use these soldiers in my campaign, mostly because they add some complexity, and when I'm already controlling four different warbands, keeping it simple is often the best solution. But I thought I would go ahead and bring one in just to see if they're worth the initial cost and the subsequent costs that you have to pay them as the scenario goes on, just for those little added benefits that they have. I'll mention that you'll also see a slight rules clarification during this battle about the spell Fool's Gold. I realize I read it slightly wrong and um, it's an error that anyone could probably easily make. So I'll just explain a little bit about that spell at one point during the battle. And now we will take a look at the warbands, and then after that we will get to the battle. In their last battle, Caltropos and his warband achieved their goal of getting in and out with three treasures. They also made good use of both the transpose and push spells, which has boosted the illusionists' confidence with them improving their ability to cast both of these spells. However, during the battle, one of their warhounds was killed. And the treasures they recovered didn't bring them much useful loot. They used the few gold crowns they found to hire another tracker to replace their fallen warhound. As they head into their next battle, Moot the Apprentice still has their orb of power with eight charges and their marksman still has their crossbow of plus two damage they venture into this battle leaving 70 gold crowns back at their workshop zoltar's warband left the living museum with a decisive victory hauling six treasures back to his laboratory in his desire to see what his treasures held and knowing his injured infantrymen would slow them down. He ordered his men to take the wounded soldier's magical leather armor and leave the soldier behind. During that battle, the warband's treasure hunter took down four enemies, including a bear cat and an enemy wizard, and Zoltar was so impressed with the soldier's performance, he decided to make him his captain which is a soldier type explained in the Cell Sword expansion book. As the warband waited for information about where to search the city next, the enchanters improved their ability to cast Embed Enchantment, Enchant Weapon, and Elemental Ball. They also brought on a replacement Treasure Hunter, and Zoltar sold his Grimoire of Enchant Armor and the Ring of Will that he had found, and he gave his newly acquired staff of power with three charges to his apprentice, Ulag. Their new captain started his role by redistributing equipment amongst the soldiers. Now Grok, the wizard slayer, carries their magic two-handed sword that deals plus two additional damage. Their hooded archer is still carrying their magical bow plus one. And the men-at-arms and the new treasure hunter are carrying their rings of teleportation. Zoltar has left a collection of potions and 160 gold crowns in his laboratory. 
Zoltar's captain's name is Winsu, and he is carrying their magical two-handed sword plus one. He's wearing their magical leather armor plus one that the warband stripped from the injured infantrymen, and he's carrying a standard crossbow. For his improved stat, he's chosen to increase his fight to plus three, and he has the tricks of the trade of furious attack and coup de gras. For out-of-game spells, starting with the enchanters, they have actually no out-of-game spells they can cast before a battle, only after a battle. So moving over to the illusionists, we'll have them cast their out-of-game spells, starting with fool's gold, Caltropos cast on a 7, and Moot cast on a 9. Caltropos, success, and Moot on a 9, also success. So two Fool's Gold will be placed on the board. Next, they'll try to cast an Illusionary Soldier, Wizard on 12, Failure, and the Apprentice on 14. Failure there as well. And lastly, they will both attempt to cast Ray Zombie. They get a plus two because they're in their workshop or crypt. Ten for Caltropos. Success. They can only have one zombie, so they have that zombie. So with the Fool's Gold that was cast, these two here will be the Fool's Gold treasures. They're the ones that have two silver studs on them. Zoltar knows the three treasures he places will be real, and they are all signified with gold cups, but he won't know which of these are real, so I will play as though Zoltar um, doesn't know which ones are fake and which ones are real besides his own three that he places. We have got the battlefield set up with the Well of Dreams and Sorrows right there in the middle of the battlefield. Now, normally you roll to see which edges of the table are neutral and which edges are player sides, but because I wanted the players to be have an equal chance to come in to the side of this well, I just decided to make the player sides over here and neutral sides over here. As far as treasure set up around the board, we'll point out Zoltar's treasures first. He has one here one there, and one up high there. So Zoltar knows those three are real. And we've got some fool's gold right here, and some fool's gold over here. And Caltrapos placed his three real treasures, the only he knows which ones are real, right there, right there, and over here, but I just realized that's actually six, less than six inches away from that one over there. So we'll just move it down the side there so it's six inches away from the other treasure. Now to roll to see which warband sets up first. And 18 to 16, so Caltropos will place his warband first. And Caltropos is actually going to decide to set up on this side of the battlefield to hopefully trick Zoltar with which of these treasures are real over here. The war bands are now set up. Over here we've got Caltropos with a knight, a warhound, the zombie or a clone as they're calling it, a tracker, the other tracker, and an archer. And over here, kind of behind this catwalk, we've got Moot with the marksman, the treasure hunter, and uh, the other archer. And the goal of the illusionists is to just make it off the board with three treasures. Over here for the enchanters, we have Zoltar. And I forgot to mention in the intro that he actually has a ring of protection plus one that he bought. Uh, at the black market between battles, they had a lot of gold crowns to spend. And he's hanging out over here with an archer, a man at arms, Grok the Templar, and their captain, Winsu. They have a lone archer with the plus one bow 
coming up after this treasure. Over here we have Ulag with his staff of power with a, their treasure hunter and their other archer. And lastly, they've got their thief over here. The enchanters desire power above everything else. So their goal is to get as many of these treasures off the board as they can. And they have a desire to fill this special bonus for this scenario, which is getting their wizard to touch this well. We'll roll initiative for the first round. 9 to 12 goes to Zoltar. Zoltar will start out by casting Enchant Weapon on this archer's bow. He casts on a 7. 4. Considering he needs to live to make it to that well in the middle, he is not going to empower that. He will then move 6 inches right up here against this wall. And now to Caltropo's turn. He will do a standard activation, but will activate with his Warhound and his clone. First, the Warhound will do a double move. Two right there, not using all of its move. Next, Caltropos will attempt to cast Transpose between the zombie and the Warhound. They're just right at 10 inches apart. He casts on a 10. 13 success. So the, the clone will jump up here. Send the Warhound back here. Then Caltropos will move six movement units. Right up against that. Now the zombie will activate and it will move four inches into contact with the treasure and will use a sec second action to pick it up. A monster spawns on a 16 plus. Three, no monster. Uleg will attempt to cast enchant weapon on the treasure hunter. He casts on a nine. Success. He will then move up here by this building. He'll just come around the side there. Moot will activate with the treasure hunter and the marksman. First, the treasure hunter will move over to here and finish his turn right there up against that wall. Then Moot will run out here Right there, he can see the marksman and the treasure hunter, and he will cast Transpose on a 12. Failure. He's going to go ahead and use his orb of power to empower that by five, and then use two health to empower it for two more to successfully cast that. His orb of power is down to three charges. And he is down to 8 health. So these two switch locations. Now we'll activate the marksman to shoot down this alleyway towards Ulag down there. So he moved. He has intervening train here and here. So Ulag gets a plus three. Ulag has a fight plus one, so a total of plus four versus plus three shoot. Oh, the shoot is an 18. And this is a bow of plus two damage. So the 18 becomes a 20, becomes a 22. That is 12 damage on Ulag. Ulag goes down right at the start of the battle. And since the marksman did not move, he'll use his second action to reload. Now to the soldier phase. We'll start with this archer over here. He will do a double move over to here and climb this ladder and end his turn right there. 
this thief will run over here, climb up this ladder, and then he'll have to use part of his second move to move over next to the treasure. So he hasn't picked it up, he's just standing there. This treasure hunter, who now has an enchanted weapon, will run down here, over to here, then double move right to there. This archer here will double move around this corner to right there next to that treasure. And this archer will double move over here and climb halfway up this ladder. Over to here, Winsu will do a single move. Right next to his wizard. So he can shoot that clone down there. The clone normally has a fight plus zero, but it's minus one because it's encumbered. Winsu moved, so it does get a plus one, plus zero fight against plus one shoot. The arrow does hit, that's a 16. That's plus two damage. Zombies have a armor of 12, so that is still six damage, which is just enough to defeat it. Next, Grok will do a double move. Underneath the ladder to right there. And the men at arms We'll do a single move to right there. For Caltrapos' soldiers, we'll start over here with this archer. He is going to run up this ramp and then double move over here and end up right next to this treasure. Now this archer will double move right over here. So he's ready to climb that ladder and he's within three inches of Caltrapos. The treasure hunter and the warhound have already been transposed, well, moved and then transposed, so they are done. This knight will move right up here, next to Caltrapos. This tracker will double move up to there. This tracker will double move over to there. There's no monsters on the board, so we'll roll for initiative for the next round. Six to ten. Zoltar the Enchanter is going first. For Zoltar, originally he was going to activate with some of these soldiers to come down and attack this uh, clone here, but the clone is dead. So he will activate by himself, and he will run up this ladder. right there and he will cast elemental ball on this archer up here he casts on a 12 he will empower that for two he has a clear line of sight he did move so the archer gets a plus one plus five elemental ball plus three defense and that elemental ball just crashes into the side of the building somewhere Caltropos will activate with the knight and this archer. The archer will run up here to right there and take a shot at Zoltar. Zoltar does have some light cover with this. This will be a hard shot. Zoltar has a normal plus three, then he has plus two more for light cover, and plus one more because the archer moved. So plus six versus plus two. 23 to 19, the arrow misses. Now, Caltropos will cast Push on the Knight. He casts on a 9. Success. That's a plus 10 shooting attack against the Knight. Plus 10 versus plus 4. 22 to 8, that's a success. That would normally be 9 damage, but instead we'll move him nine spaces. Nine will put him right up against that treasure. Caltropos was considering running over here to take a drink from this well, 
but considering he's not as power hungry as some other wizards, and this other wizard has an army of troops ready to rush in there, uh, Keltropos will just stay where he is for the moment. This knight will now activate. He will pick up the treasure. We'll see if a monster appears on a 16 or higher. Nope. Then he will move two and a half inches over here. Uleg was taken out by that crossbow bolt, so there is no apprentice phase over here. So we'll move over to Moot. And the apprentice will do the same thing his wizard did. He will attempt to cast push on this marksman, sending him at this treasure. Moot casts push on an 11. Success. It's a plus 10 shooting attack. Plus 10 versus plus 2. 24 to 8. That is successful. He has an armor of 12, so that will move him 12 inches. 12 inches will ram him right into this scenery here. And I didn't say he was activating with the spellcaster, but that's just fine because he's in pretty good cover right there. For Zoltar's soldiers, we'll start with this archer up here with the plus one bow. He will fire at that archer over there. Plus three shoot versus plus two defense. That is a failure. Then he will just move over into contact with this treasure. This archer will finish climbing the ladder and we'll run over here in front of his wizard. And he will also shoot at that archer. Plus two, then he moved, so a total of plus three for defense. Shot is a 12 to eight, so it is a hit. Armor of 11 only deals one damage to the archer. This is Zoltar's team really wanting to stop this archer. And this archer here, not knowing whether this treasure is real or not, he will move into shooting position. He'll climb up here and take a shot at the archer. Plus two shot, plus three defense because of the movement. Failure again. Doing a quick rules check for fool's gold. I had forgotten that as soon as any figure comes into contact with the fool's gold, it vanishes. I was thinking they had to pick it up, which means since this thief has touched this treasure token, he knows that it is real because it didn't vanish. And over here, this archer has touched this treasure token, which is the fake one with the silver on it. So that one vanishes. And since this archer touched this treasure token earlier and it didn't vanish, they know that one is real. And this marksman has touched that treasure, so they know that one's real. So knowing that Caltrapos placed this treasure token, this treasure token, this treasure token, and that treasure token, and the only one of those that has not been touched is this one, Zoltar's warband knows that that one is a fake. Since this treasure hunter now knows this treasure next to him is a fake, he is just gonna run right past it. In the process, he would touch it, which would make it disappear and end up down here. And he has a ring of teleportation, so he will use that to warp over behind the marksman. And unlike the teleport spell, the ring says it can be used to enter or leave combat. So he is engaged with the marksman. Thief will actually leave this treasure behind Hop down, run to there, then double move to right there. Over here, Grok will double move over to that treasure. And the Man at Arms will also move over there.
Winsu will use one action to reload his crossbow and then the other to move over here by this wall. For Caltrapo's team, first thing, this archer up here with all these arrows and elemental balls coming at him, he wants to grab that treasure and get out of there, so he will pick it up. Monster appears on a 16 plus. Nope. Then he will run three inches back into this tower. Right to there so he can't be shot by that archer over there on that tower. Over here, this tracker will take a shot at this archer up here. Shot plus two versus fight plus two. This shot misses. He will then move seven movement units back over to there. This treasure hunter here can double move just enough to snap into combat with this treasure hunter. Now the marksman will attack. With support, the marksman has fight plus four. The treasure hunter has an enchanted weapon, so he has fight plus five. All right, four, or nine to 14, the treasure hunter wins. That is two damage on the marksman. Knowing the power of Zoltar, this tracker wants to do whatever he can do to slow him down. He'll run up on top of here. And from there, he's got a good shot at Zoltar. He moved, and Zoltar has light cover, so Zoltar has a plus six versus plus two. And that arrow misses. This Warhound will double move to right there. All soldiers have gone. There are no monsters on the board, so we will roll for initiative. Zoltar is going first again. Zoltar will activate with this archer. And Zoltar is going to cast Enchant Weapon over here onto this Men at Arms that you can barely see. He casts on a 7. He will empower that by 2. Then he will run down this ladder to right there in front of this rubble pile. This archer will now take a shot at this archer across the way. Plus two versus plus two. That is a 20 for the archer. That is nine damage on the red archer. And after that, the archer will run back over to this ladder Climb partway down and drop the rest of the way. Over here to Caltropos, he can't activate with anyone, but he is going to cast Raise Zombie. He casts on a 10. Success. This clone disappears and then reappears right over here next to Caltropos. Then Caltropos will run. To right there. Moot will activate with this Warhound and he will cast Imp. You can see through here right up over to here. He casts on a 16. 18, he got it. So this weird little creature pops up right over here. Well, I'll put him there because that's the only spot he can stay. And then Moot will move right over to here. And the Warhound will move into combat behind this treasure hunter. And he will attack. The Warhound is supported by two troops, so plus five versus plus five. 19 for the Warhound, and 12 for the enemy treasure hunter. Armor of 11 means that's eight damage on that treasure hunter. For the soldier phase, Winsu will activate and fire a crossbow bolt at this imp that just appeared. Plus one versus plus one. That is a miss. Then he'll move over to defend his wizard. 
This hooded archer will fire an arrow at this badly injured archer over here. Plus three versus plus two. 12 versus 12, a tie misses. Otherwise that would have been one damage to defeat him. He will then climb over this wall and down here a bit. This archer here will climb up here. And he has a clear shot now at that injured archer. He moved, so plus three defense against plus two shot. 19. Oh, against 21, another miss. At this point, I'd forgotten I'd actually moved this archer during the wizard phase. So I had him fire an arrow, which missed, and then I moved him over here. So uh, he shouldn't have been able to get over here already, but in the long run, I don't think it really affected anything in the game. Right there, he's actually partway up this ladder. Over on this side, this thief will run up and engage this warhound. No support because the treasure hunter is engaged with other soldiers. Plus one versus plus one. So 18 for the Warhound. That is nine damage on that thief. And the Warhound will kick him out of combat. This treasure hunter now will also attack the Warhound. Plus five versus plus five. And Zoltar's, and Zoltar's treasure hunter won that. That is 11 damage on that Warhound. It goes down. The man at arms here will move six inches over to there and then use his ring of teleportation to come over here. To right there in the pile of rubble. Grok will leave that treasure behind, come over here, climb this wall, and with a double move he can engage that tracker. For the illusionist soldier phase, this knight will run off the board with this treasure. Not the guys you usually have carrying your treasure off the board. This tracker will just simply turn around so he looks like he's engaged, but he will not actually fight. This wounded archer will run over to here. And from there, he can see Zoltar down there. So even though he can see Zoltar, Zoltar is about halfway covered behind this wall and he's shooting over the well. So plus one for the well, plus two for the light cover, plus one for movement. And he normally has a plus three fight, so plus seven defense against plus two shot. That shot misses. This tracker will double move down here, past this zombie, past this wall, to right there. This zombie will run over to here. Over to here, we'll have Treasure Hunter versus Treasure Hunter. Caltropos Hunter has a has support for a total of plus six against plus five with that enchanted weapon for Zoltar's Treasure Hunter. Uh, Caltropos doesn't do well. So that is a 22 for Zoltar's Treasure Hunter. That is 11 damage. This archer in here will run down this ramp Looking pretty cool standing there. Now for the monster phase, this imp will run to the nearest enemy, which is Winsu the captain. The imp has a plus one. Winsu has his magic sword. It's for a total of plus four. 20 to 17, that imp goes down. 10 damage, it had six health. And we'll roll initiative for the next round. 13 verse 16, Zoltar goes first again. 
So for Zoltar's move, he wants to take a look at that well. So he is going to cast Teleport to get himself over there. He casts on a 13. 18. That is, I believe, the first time he's actually cast that spell in this campaign. And we'll teleport to right there. Next turn, he can use an action to drink from the well. So for Caltropo's turn, he's just going to climb this wall right here. And from there, he has a clear shot at this archer over here, and he is going to cast Push. He casts on a 9, 4. He'll go ahead and empower that for 5. It's a plus 10 shooting attack. He moved, so the archer gets an additional plus 1. So plus 10 versus plus 3. 22 to 13, that's a hit. That is 11 damage, or 11 moves. And in a straight line, that's going to move him 11 moves, which will put him all the way back here at the edge. And he does fall 4 inches there, which is the equivalent of 6 damage. Moot is going to attempt to cast Combat Awareness on himself. He casts this on a 16. Not even close. He takes two points of damage. Then Moot will move. And engage that Treasure Hunter. Now for the soldiers. We'll start with the captain. He's going to move over this pile of rubble. And a double move will put him right there. This archer that got pushed out of combat is going to double move to right there. This other archer here is going to move to right there and then take a shot at that zombie, that clone. Shot plus three, fight plus one only because the archer moved. 15, that is three damage on the clone. Grok will attack the tracker. Grok has a plus five, tracker has a plus two. 18 to six, that is a successful hit. Armor 11, the staff minus one damage, that is six damage on that tracker. Grok will stay in combat, and then we will move down here to this man at arms. He will move around all these soldiers. Since they are in combat, they cannot choose to force combat. He'll come around here and attack Moot. Plus four for the men-at-arms, plus zero for Moot. Oh, 23. Uh, Moot falls. Next, this thief will run around and engage the marksman, and he will choose not to fight. He's just gonna stand there to prevent support against his treasure hunter. Then the treasure hunter will attack the treasure hunter. Zoltar's plus five treasure hunter, Caltrapo's plus four treasure hunter. All right, plus five is 14. That is a hit for three damage. The treasure hunter is down to one, so he goes down. Over here, this archer will climb up next to this treasure and will pick it up. On a 16 plus, a monster appears somewhere. Nope. Over here, this archer will take a shot at Zoltar. Plus two shot, plus three fight. Zoltar defends that. Then the archer will run over here by Caltropos. So they can activate together next turn if needed. Next, this tracker here is going to run up and pick up that treasure token. A monster appears on a 16 or higher. Almost, no monsters. This zombie here is actually going to run. To right there. This tracker is just going to stay in combat and not fight. The marksman over here will attack the thief. Plus two for the marksman, plus 
three for the thief with support. And that's a 17. That is seven damage on that thief. It only had one health left, so that thief is defeated. And lastly, this archer will just run off the board with this treasure. There's no monsters on the board, so we'll roll for initiative. Four to ten, another initiative win for the enchanters. Zoltar will use his main. Actually, Zoltar will activate with his captain, and Zoltar will use his first action to drink from this pool granting him an extra 50 experience at the end of the battle. Then he will move into combat with this tracker. Then Winsu, the captain, will also move into combat with the tracker. And Winsu will attack. Winsu has a plus six with support against plus two. 18 to 11, so that is successful. Armor of 11 plus the staff, that is 6 damage on the tracker. Caltropos needs a good roll this turn because his plan is to cast Transpose to switch the position of that tracker with this zombie. He casts on a 10. 13, that is successful. So that will pull this tracker out of combat with his treasure move this zombie into combat and both apprentices now have fallen in combat so we move on to soldier phase first this archer will run around through this little canyon here and pick up that treasure monster appears on a 16 plus it does for monster level two it's a level one and it will be a five two zombies and they will appear at spot 11 which the way I number my board will be right over here and there's the two zombies even though they look like skeletons Next, the archer with the magical bow will move. All right, so the archer has a shoot of plus three. And the tracker, I'd, almost, I'd forgotten earlier that while he's carrying a treasure, he has minus one fight. So he has one fight, but then he gets a plus one because the archer moved. Plus three versus plus two. 10 for the shot, that doesn't get past the armor. Up here, Grok will try to slay this tracker. Plus five versus plus two. All right, that's seven to 12. Grok loses, he doesn't take any damage because of his armor, but he does lose the combat and the tracker will push him out of the way. He doesn't fall and hurt himself, he just goes down the steps a bit. This archer carrying the treasure will hop down, double move to right there. Over here, this man at arms will move into combat and he will attack the marksman with support. He's plus six versus plus two. Critical hit. And that marksman goes down. This treasure hunter will run down here and a double move snap into combat with that archer for Caltropos team this tracker since he hasn't actually gone this turn will run over here this badly injured archer with one health will just stay in combat with that treasure hunter we'll have this zombie attack Zoltar with an attempt to knock him into the well Plus zero against plus five. Reroll, it's on its side. A 
11 to 7. He does win. That's one point of damage. He can push him an inch backwards, which puts him into the well. And the special rules for this scenario are that if a, if a figure falls into the pool, they are essentially defeated. Well, that was actually pretty funny to uh, <laughs> that he got pushed in there by just a, a zombie there. Um, we'll have this tracker up here. Fire an arrow at this archer. The archer is encumbered, so plus two versus plus one. 11 verse 20, the archer dodges. This tracker now just wants to get out of there. He'll run down some of these stairs, hop down, and run to right there. All right, all remaining soldiers have gone. We'll roll initiative for the next round. Even when Zoltar rolls a two, Caltropo still can't win the initiative. Zoltar is, of course, fallen in combat. So we'll go to Caltropos. Caltropos will attempt to cast heal on himself. He casts on a 10. Success, he is back to full health. Then he will run down this catwalk and over to here, getting ready to leave the board. For the soldier phase, we'll start with this man at arms over here for Zoltar. He will pick up that treasure. A monster appears on a 16 plus. Nope. Then he will move three inches. To right there. This archer here will run off the board with this treasure. We'll see where these zombies go. They have no line of sight to anybody. This one, move this way four inches. Second move, we'll move this way two inches. This one here, we'll move four inches this way. And he can't see anyone, so he will move again. This way, he can only move one inch since this water ice is considered rough terrain. He will be there. And this archer here is going to run over this way with its treasure. Winsu is going to attempt to take down this clone. Plus four versus plus zero. Sixteen. 11, that is a hit. That's four damage. The clone was already down to three. It goes down. Maybe. And this archer here, we'll run over to here, and we'll make one last attempt at stopping that tracker. Shoot plus three. He moved, so the tracker has a total of plus two since he's encumbered. Seven for the shot. Seven for the tracker. That arrow just whizzes right off the edge of the board there. Now we'll have this treasure hunter attack this archer. Plus five against plus two. 16. That's a hit, that archer only had one health left. Now that treasure hunter can move, but it's not gonna be enough. You can't quite get close enough to snap into combat to stop that tracker from leaving. And I forgot Winsu over here after he took out that zombie was going to make a charge for this tracker. And he can snap into combat there. Grok being upset that that tracker over here injured him. He is going to run at him as well. On a double move he can get right up beside him there. This tracker will run off the board with this treasure. Over here, the tracker will attack Grok. Tracker has plus two, Grok has plus seven with support. And that tracker goes down. For the monster phase, this zombie here can see Grok, so he will double move that direction. 
since he's on this ice pond, he doesn't make it very far. This one will randomly move this direction. And again, move that direction. And I don't need to worry about initiative for the final round because regardless, Caltropos will be the first one to move. He's just gonna run, climb down, leave the battlefield over there, which means his warband will either all be off the board or dead, and which means that Zoltar's warband will get their treasures they're holding, this one here, and that one back there. This battle did not turn out the way Zoltar had planned, as neither he nor his apprentice Ulag walked off the battlefield. They only recovered three treasures, and even though that's half of what's out there, that's not what they strive to do. Zoltar was able to take a drink from the pool, from the well, but that also cost him dearly as he was later pushed into that pool. So now we'll see the fate of these three soldiers. Starting with the thief, he is dead. Next for Ulag, he has a full recovery. And Zoltar, three, that is not good. That is the first permanent injury received by anyone in this campaign. We'll roll to see what happens. 19, a smashed jaw. So that is a very bad one to get as this causes him to have difficulty speaking and he now has a minus one penalty to all of his casting rolls. That is really bad. So something happened to Zoltar there when he fell into that well, whether he hit his face on a rock in there or some weird magic in there affected him, but uh, that's gonna be a bad penalty for him for the remainder of the campaign. Let's go ahead and see what these three treasures get them. 12, 13, and 19. They received 60 gold crowns in a magical item, 20 gold crowns in a grimoire, and 150 gold crowns in a grimoire. For their magic item, 14, a candle of summoning. And for their grimoires, I forgot to push record when I rolled these, but this is what I rolled. We've got column three, number four, which is plain walk. And column four, number 10, which is miraculous cure. And for their after game spells, during the battle, the spellcasters successfully cast enchant weapon on the treasure hunter and the man at arms. So they will both attempt to cast embed enchantment. Zoltar casts on a 10. Successfully enchanted one of those. That actually would have been, he would cast on an 11 because of his smashed jaw. Still successful. Ulag casts on a 12 to embed the other weapon. And failure. So one of those weapons is now enchanted permanently. In past games, Zoltar has also cast Absorb Knowledge. However, he's only allowed to cast that if he walked off the battlefield, which he did not. For experience points for this warband, we'll start with the Captain Winsu. He gains 10 experience for participating in the battle. He gains 10 more for surviving the battle. And during the battle, he defeated two clones and an imp, giving him 10 experience for each of those. For a total of 50 experience he received for the battle. For the spellcasters, they had no failed spells that caused them damage. However, they only successfully cast four spells due to the early takedown of Ulag. Even though Winsu got 10 experience for the imp they took down, since it was a warband member that took that down, the spellcasters also gained 5 experience for that. 
They successfully pulled three treasures off the board for 150 experience. Before Zoltar was pushed into the well, he took a drink from it, which gave him 50 experience for a total of 245 in-game experience. And then due to their laboratory that they call their base, they gain an extra 20 experience after every battle for a total of 265 experience points. This goes along with their 230 gold crowns they found, which 10% of that will go to their captain. And they also found a candle of summoning, a grimoire of plane walk, and a grimoire of miraculous cure, which they might be using due to that jaw injury Zoltar is facing. And they successfully enchanted one of those magic hand weapons after the battle. There's now a magic weapon of theirs. Caltrapo's warband did what they set out to do, which was to get three treasures off the board. And once again, using transpose and push in combination worked well to secure those. And they happened to get all three of the treasures that were placed by the opposing warband. There was a different treasure they had originally gone after, which actually cost them four of their soldiers went down <laughs> trying to get that one. Um, but it was enough of a distraction for them to secure the other ones. But now we need to see what the fate of these six individuals is. Starting with the Warhound. He, oh, it's a six. He's badly wounded. Next, the Archer. 20, he is fine. The Tracker. Ooh, their brand new Tracker died. Treasure Hunter, 18, he is fine. Marksman with the Magical Crossbow, 14, he is fine. And Moot, the Apprentice, will he come out of this one alive? 16, he is fine. So one injured Warhound and one dead Tracker. Next, we'll see what they get out of these three treasures. 11, 12, and 18. That is 40 gold crowns and a magical item, 60 gold crowns and a magical item, and 120 gold crowns and a grimoire. For their two magical items, 6 and 11, Staff of Casting, and Gloves of Strength. For the Staff of Casting, We'll be rolling on the spell table to determine which spell this staff helps us to cast. Column three, spell 19. Forget spell. So they don't know this spell, but should they ever learn it, they'll have a plus two to cast it. And their third treasure gave them a grimoire. Column four, number 11. Raise zombie. So that's a spell they already have. They're clone spells, so they can sell that for some extra gold crowns. For experience points, the illusionists had one failed spell that caused them damage for five. They successfully cast nine spells throughout the game for 90. They retrieved three treasures for 150. So all total, they gain 245 experience points. That goes along with 200 gold crowns, a staff of casting for the forget spell, gloves of strength, and a grimoire of raise zombie. Well, I had fun with this battle. Uh, there was a couple laugh out loud moments. Um, one was that the enchanters won every single initiative roll in the game. And the other was when Zoltar got pushed into the well by that zombie rolling a, a lucky roll. And speaking of luck, I think the illusionists got kind of lucky in this battle. They were able to pull that treasure from the middle of the board and get it off the board right before um, they almost got stopped by an enemy soldier. And Caltropos also was able to get off the board just before a treasure hunter came and engaged him. And also... The fact that they were able to take out both enemy spellcasters 
pretty easily um, really aided in their uh, success as well. And even with that success, there was one giant battle on one side of the, the table where the illusionists lost four of their soldiers, one of which was their illusionist. Uh, and that battle could have really gone either way. So I think maybe the enchanters got lucky there that they were able to secure the treasure that was in the middle of that, that battle. And it's this uncertainty that I think makes Frostgrave such a great game. For the enchanters, Although their spellcasters were somewhat ineffective in this battle, their glut of magical weapons and their rings of teleportation really helped their soldiers to do really well in this battle. And their new captain, Winsu, did well. He defeated three enemy soldiers, but as suspected, uh, his added complexity meant that I forgot some things about him. I forgot he's carrying a two-handed weapon, which deals plus two damage. And I also totally forgot about his tricks of the trade, which could have given him some damage bonuses during some of the combat. So hopefully I'll remember those in the next battle that he's in. That smash jaw that Zoltar suffered in that battle is pretty bad because that affects all of his spells. All of his spells get a minus one uh, to his casting roll, which is the equivalent of having lost multiple levels. So it's pretty clutch that they found that grimoire of Miraculous Cure. And so they plan to learn that out of battle. And then Zoltar and Ulag are going to do all they can to try to cast that spell out of battle in the next maybe just one battle, maybe multiple battles, to try to fix the, that broken jaw. And with the illusionists, whether it was luck or skill, they did well and they found a lot of good loot in this battle. Uh, once again, their spells Push and Transpose shined as they were able to move their soldiers around the battlefield, and their spells in general did well as they successfully cast nine spells. When they used that knight to pull the treasure off the board, that might not have been the best use of that soldier. Uh, it would have been nice to see him in that giant melee that was happening on the other side of the battlefield, but it ended up working out for them in the long run. I think the Well of Dreams and Sorrows is a good scenario. Anytime soldiers are forced to come to the middle of the board, it means there's going to be some good action and some tough decision making. And the risk for the wizard to go up there and try to get the experience by drinking from the well uh, just adds to that tension further. Despite this scenario having the longest name of any of the scenarios found in the core rulebook, it has possibly the simplest instructions. And that's kind of nice because sometimes it's easy to forget some of the minor details that are involved with some of the other scenarios. So those are my thoughts and experiences with this scenario. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this battle and about your own experiences with this scenario. And while you're down there, you can click like or subscribe so you can keep up with all the content that Dad's Playing Games is releasing. And with that, I'm Alan with Dad's Playing Games, and we'll see you on the next video.